Jacksonian democracy is a 19th century political philosophy in the United States that espoused greater democracy for the common man as that term was then defined. Originating with the seventh President Andrew Jackson and his supporters, it became the nation's dominant political worldview for a generation. This era, called the Jacksonian era or second party system by historians and political scientists, lasted roughly from Jackson's 1828 election as president until slavery became the dominant issue in 1854 and the American Civil War dramatically reshaped American politics. It emerged when the long dominant Democratic Republican Party became factionalized around 1824. Jackson's supporters began to form the modern Democratic Party and rivals John Quincy Adams and Henry Clay, created the National Republican Party, which would soon combine with other anti-Jackson elements to form the Whig Party. Broadly speaking, the era was characterized by a democratic spirit and built upon Jackson's equal political policy subsequent to ending what he termed a monopoly of government by elites. Even before the Jacksonian era began, suffrage had been extended to a majority of white male adult citizens, a result the Jacksonian celebrated. Jacksonian democracy also promoted the strength of the presidency and executive branch at the expense of Congress, while also seeking to broaden the public's participation in government. The Jacksonians demanded elected not appointed judges and rewrote many state constitutions to reflect the new values. In national terms, they favored geographical expansion, justifying it in terms of manifest destiny. There was usually a consensus among both Jacksonians and Whigs that battles over slavery should be avoided. Jackson's expansion of democracy was largely limited to Americans of European descent and voting rights were extended to adult white males only. There was little or no progress and in some cases, regression for the rights of African Americans and Native Americans. Jackson's biographer Robert V. Remini argues, Jacksonian democracy stretches the concept of democracy about as far as it can go and still remain workable. As such it has inspired much of the dynamic and dramatic events of the 19th and 20th centuries in American history—populism, progressivism, the new and fair deals, and the programs of the new frontier and great society. Topic. Philosophy Topic. General principles William S. Belko in 2015 summarizes, "...the core concepts underlying Jacksonian democracy," as equal protection of the laws, an aversion to a moneyed aristocracy, exclusive privileges, and monopolies, and a predilection for the common man, majority rule, and the welfare of the community over the individual. Arthur M. Schlesinger, Jr., in 1945 argues Jacksonian democracy was built on the following Expanded suffrage, the Jacksonians believed that voting rights should be extended to all white men. By the end of the 1820s, attitudes and state laws had shifted in favor of universal manhood suffrage and by 1856 all requirements to own property and nearly all requirements to pay taxes had been dropped. Manifest destiny – This was the belief that Americans had a destiny to settle the American West and to expand control from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific and that the West should be settled by yeoman farmers. However, the Free Soil Jacksonians, notably Martin Van Buren, argued for limitations on slavery in the new areas to enable the poor white man to flourish—they split with the main party briefly in 1848. The Whigs generally opposed manifest destiny and expansion, saying the nation should build up its cities. Patronage, also known as the spoils system, patronage was the policy of placing political supporters into appointed offices. Many Jacksonians held the view that rotating political appointees in and out of office was not only the right, but also the duty of winners in political contests. Patronage was theorized to be good because it would encourage political participation by the common man and because it would make a politician more accountable for poor government service by his appointees. Jacksonians also held that long tenure in the civil service was corrupting, so civil servants should be rotated out of office at regular intervals. However, patronage often led to the hiring of incompetent and sometimes corrupt officials due to the emphasis on party loyalty above any other qualifications. Strict constructionism, like the Jeffersonians who strongly believed in the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions, Jacksonians initially favored a federal government of limited powers. Jackson said that he would guard against 
all encroachments upon the legitimate sphere of state sovereignty. However, he was not a states' rights extremist. Indeed, the nullification crisis would find Jackson fighting against what he perceived as state encroachments on the proper sphere of federal influence. This position was one basis for the Jacksonians' opposition to the Second Bank of the United States. As the Jacksonians consolidated power, they more often advocated expanding federal power, presidential power in particular. Laissez-faire, complementing a strict construction of the Constitution, the Jacksonians generally favored a hands-off approach to the economy as opposed to the Whig program sponsoring modernization, railroads, banking and economic growth. The chief spokesman amongst laissez-faire advocates was William Leggett of the Locofocos in New York City. Opposition to banking, in particular, the Jacksonians opposed government-granted monopolies to banks, especially the National Bank, a central bank known as the Second Bank of the United States. Jackson said, "...the bank is trying to kill me, but I will kill it." And he did so. The Whigs, who strongly supported the bank, were led by Henry Clay, Daniel Webster and Nicholas Biddle, the bank chairman. Jackson himself was opposed to all banks because he believed they were devices to cheat common people. He and many followers believed that only gold and silver should be used to back currency, rather than the integrity of a bank. <inaudible> election by the common man An important movement in the period from 1800 to 1830—before the Jacksonians were organized—was the expansion of the right to vote toward including all men. Older states with property restrictions dropped them, namely all but Rhode Island, Virginia and North Carolina by the mid-1820s. No new states had property qualifications although three had adopted tax-paying qualifications. Ohio, Louisiana and Mississippi, of which only in Louisiana were these significant and long-lasting. The process was peaceful and widely supported, except in the state of Rhode Island. In Rhode Island, the Dorr Rebellion of the 1840s demonstrated that the demand for equal suffrage was broad and strong, although the subsequent reform included a significant property requirement for anyone resident but born outside of the United States. However, free black men lost voting rights in several states during this period. The fact that a man was now legally allowed to vote did not necessarily mean he routinely voted. He had to be pulled to the polls, which became the most important role of the local parties. They systematically sought out potential voters and brought them to the polls. Voter turnout soared during the 1830s, reaching about 80% of adult male population in the 1840 presidential election. Tax-paying qualifications remained in only five states by 1860 Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, Delaware and North Carolina. One innovative strategy for increasing voter participation and input was developed outside the Jacksonian camp. Prior to the presidential election of 1832, the Anti-Masonic Party conducted the nation's first presidential nominating convention. Held in Baltimore, Maryland, September 26-28, 1831, it transformed the process by which political parties select their presidential and vice-presidential candidates. Factions The period from 1824 to 1832 was politically chaotic. The Federalist Party and the First Party system were dead and with no effective opposition, the old Democratic-Republican Party withered away. Every state had numerous political factions, but they did not cross state lines. Political coalitions formed and dissolved and politicians moved in and out of alliances, most former Republicans supported Jackson, while others such as Henry Clay opposed him. Most former Federalists, such as Daniel Webster, opposed Jackson, although some like James Buchanan supported him. In 1828, John Quincy Adams pulled together a network of factions called the National Republicans, but he was defeated by Jackson. By the late 1830s, the Jacksonian Democrats and the Whigs politically battled it out nationally and in every state. <laughs> Formed the Democratic Party. Jacksonian democracy The spirit of Jacksonian democracy animated the party from the early 1830s to the 1850s, shaping the era, with the Whig Party the main opposition. 
The New Democratic Party became a coalition of poor farmers, city dwelling laborers, and Irish Catholics. The new party was pulled together by Martin Van Buren in 1828 as Jackson crusaded against the corruption of President John Quincy Adams. The new party, which did not get the name Democrats until 1834, swept to a landslide. As Mary Beth Norton explains regarding 1828, Jacksonians believed the people's will had finally prevailed. Through a lavishly financed coalition of state parties, political leaders, and newspaper editors, a popular movement had elected the president. The Democrats became the nation's first well-organized national party. The platforms, speeches and editorials were founded upon a broad consensus among Democrats. As Norton et al. explain, the Democrats represented a wide range of views but shared a fundamental commitment to the Jeffersonian concept of an agrarian society. They viewed a central government as the enemy of individual liberty and they believed that government intervention in the economy benefited special interest groups and created corporate monopolies that favored the rich. They sought to restore the independence of the individual—the artisan and the ordinary farmer—by ending federal support of banks and corporations and restricting the use of paper currency. Jackson vetoed more legislation than all previous presidents combined. The long-term effect was to create the modern strong presidency. Jackson and his supporters also opposed reform as a movement. Reformers eager to turn their programs into legislation called for a more active government. However, Democrats tended to oppose programs like educational reform and the establishment of a public education system. For instance, they believed that public schools restricted individual liberty by interfering with parental responsibility and undermined freedom of religion by replacing church schools. Jackson looked at the Indian question in terms of military and legal policy, not as a problem due to their race. In 1813, Jackson adopted and treated as his own son a three-year-old Indian orphan—seeing in him a fellow orphan that was, "...so much like myself I feel an unusual sympathy for him." In legal terms, when it became a matter of state sovereignty versus tribal sovereignty he went with the states and moved the Indians to fresh lands with no white rivals in what became known as the Trail of Tears. Among the leading followers was Stephen A. Douglas, senator from Illinois, who was the key player in the passage of the Compromise of 1850, and was a leading contender for the 1852 Democratic presidential nomination. According to his biographer Robert W. Johansson, Douglas was preeminently a Jacksonian, and his adherence to the tenets of what became known as Jacksonian democracy grew as his own career developed. Popular rule, or what he called would later call popular sovereignty, lay at the base of his political structure. Like most Jacksonians, Douglas believed that the people spoke through the majority, that the majority will was the expression of the popular will. Reforms. Jackson fulfilled his promise of broadening the influence of the citizenry in government, although not without vehement controversy over his methods. Jacksonian policies included ending the Bank of the United States, expanding westward, and removing American Indians from the Southeast. Jackson was denounced as a tyrant by opponents on both ends of the political spectrum, such as Henry Clay and John C. Calhoun. This led to the rise of the Whig Party. Jackson created a spoils system to clear out elected officials in government of an opposing party and replace them with his supporters as a reward for their electioneering. With Congress controlled by his enemies, Jackson relied heavily on the power of the veto to block their moves. One of the most important of these was the Maysville Road veto in 1830. A part of Clay's American system, the bill would have allowed for federal funding of a project to construct a road linking Lexington and the Ohio River, the entirety of which would be in the state of Kentucky, Clay's home state. His primary objection was based on the local nature of the project. He argued it was not the federal government's job to fund projects of such a local nature and or those lacking a connection to the nation as a whole. The debates in Congress reflected two competing visions of federalism. The Jacksonians saw the Union strictly as the cooperative aggregation of the individual states, while the Whigs saw the entire nation as a distinct entity, Carl Lane argues. Securing national debt freedom was a core element of Jacksonian democracy. 
Paying off the national debt was a high priority which would make a reality of the Jeffersonian vision of America truly free from rich bankers, self-sufficient in world affairs, virtuous at home, and administered by a small government not prone to financial corruption or payoffs. What became of Jacksonian democracy, according to Sean Wilentz was diffusion. Many ex-Jacksonians turned their crusade against the money power into one against the slave power and became Republicans. He points to the struggle over the Wilmot Proviso of 1846, the Free Soil Party Revolt of 1848, and the mass defections from the Democrats in 1854 over the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Others Jacksonian leaders such as Chief Justice Roger B. Taney endorsed slavery through the 1857 Dred Scott decision. Southern Jacksonians overwhelmingly endorsed secession in 1861, apart from a few opponents led by Andrew Johnson. In the North, Jacksonians Stephen A. Douglas and the War Democrats fiercely opposed secession, while Franklin Pierce, James Buchanan and the Copperheads did not. <laughs> Jacksonian presidents In addition to Jackson, his second vice president and one of the key organizational leaders of the Jacksonian Democratic Party, Martin Van Buren, served as president. Van Buren was defeated in the next election by William Henry Harrison. Harrison died just 30 days into his term and his vice president John Tyler quickly reached accommodation with the Jacksonians. Tyler was then succeeded by James K. Polk, a Jacksonian who won the election of 1844 with Jackson's endorsement. Franklin Pierce had been a supporter of Jackson as well. James Buchanan served in Jackson's administration as minister to Russia and as Polk's secretary of state, but he did not pursue Jacksonian policies. Finally, Andrew Johnson, who had been a strong supporter of Jackson, became president following the assassination of Abraham Lincoln in 1865, but by then Jacksonian democracy had been pushed off the stage of American politics. President Donald Trump has also been characterized as a Jacksonian. Notably, he had the portrait of Andrew Jackson moved into the Oval Office and has criticized the movement to replace Jackson's portrait on the $20 bill with that of Harriet Tubman. See also Andrew Jackson presidential campaign, 1828 History of the United States Democratic Party Jeffersonian democracy Voting rights in the United States Topic Notes Topic References and Bibliography Adams, Sean Patrick, ed. A Companion to the Era of Andrew Jackson, twenty thirteen, Table of Contents. Altschuler, Glenn C., Blumen, Stuart M. 1997. Limits of Political Engagement in Antebellum America, A New Look at the Golden Age of Participatory Democracy. Journal of American History. Organization of American Historians. 84 855-885 p. 878-879. doi. 10.2307.2953083. JSTOR 2953083. Baker, Jean. Affairs of Party The Political Culture of Northern Democrats in the Mid 19th Century. Bronx, N.Y.: Fordham University Press. ISBN 0 585 12533 3. Benson, Lee. The Concept of Jacksonian Democracy New York as a Test Case. New York, Athenaeum. ISBN 0-691-00572-9. OCLC 21378753. Bug, James L., Jr. Jacksonian Democracy, Myth or Reality? New York, Holt, Reinhardt and Winston. Short Essays. Cave, Alfred A. Jacksonian Democracy and the Historians. Gainesville, F.L., University of Florida Press, Cave, Alfred A. The Jacksonian Movement in American Historiography. Ph.D., U. Florida, 1961, online free, 258 pp, Bibliog pp 240-58 Cheatham, Mark R. 2011. 
Andrew Jackson, Slavery, and Historians. PDF. History Compass. 9 4, 326. Doi 101111 j 1478-0542.2011.00763, x. Cheatham, Mark R. and Terry Corr, eds. Historical Dictionary of the Jacksonian Era and Manifest Destiny 2nd ed. 2016, 544 pp. Cole, Donald B. Martin Van Buren and the American Political System. Princeton, N.J., Princeton University Press. ISBN 0-691-04715-4. Cole, Donald B. Jacksonian Democracy in New Hampshire. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University Press. ISBN 0-674-46990-9. Uses quantitative electoral data. Angerman, Stanley L., Sokoloff, Kenneth L. The Evolution of Suffrage Institutions in the New World", pdf. 14–16. Formasano, Ronald P. The Birth of Mass Political Parties, Michigan, 1827–1861. Princeton, N.J., Princeton University Press. ISBN 0-691-04605-0. Uses quantitative electoral data. Formasano, Ronald P. The Transformation of Political Culture, Massachusetts Parties, 1790s–1840s. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-503124-5. Uses quantitative electoral data. Formasano, Ronald P. The «Party Period» Revisited. Journal of American History. Organization of American Historians. 86 93–120. doi. 10.2307.2567408. JSTOR 2567408. Formasano, Ronald P. Political Character, Antipartyism, and the Second Party System. American Quarterly. The Johns Hopkins University Press. 21 4, 683 709. doi 10.2307 2,711,603. 2,711,603. Formasano, Ronald P. Deferential Participant Politics The Early Republic's Political Culture, 1789 1840. American Political Science Review. American Political Science Association. 68 2, 473–487. doi. 10.2307.1959497. JSTOR 1959497. Hammond, Bray Andrew Jackson's Battle with the Money Power. American Heritage, Summary of Chapter 8, an excerpt from his Pulitzer Prize-winning Banks and Politics in America, From the Revolution to the Civil War 1954. Hofstadter, Richard 1948. The American Political Tradition. Chapter on A.J. Hofstadter, Richard. William Leggett, Spokesman of Jacksonian Democracy, Political Science Quarterly 58 No. 4 December 1943, 581–94, in JSTOR Hofstadter, Richard The Idea of a Party System, The Rise of Legitimate Opposition in the United States, 1780–1840. Holt, Michael F. The Rise and Fall of the American Whig Party, Jacksonian Politics and the Onset of the Civil War. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-505544-6. Holt, Michael F. 1992. Political Parties and American Political Development, From the Age of Jackson to the Age of Lincoln. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Louisiana State University Press. ISBN 0-8071-1728-5. Howe, Daniel Walker. What Hath God Wrought? The Transformation of America, 1815-1848 Oxford History of the United States 2009, Pulitzer Prize, Surveys Era from Aunt Jacksonane Perspective How, Daniel Walker 1991. The Evangelical Movement and Political Culture During the Second Party System. 
Journal of American History. Organization of American Historians. 77 4, 1216 1239. doi 10.2307 2078260. JSTOR 2078260. Cole, Lawrence Frederick. The Politics of Individualism, Parties and the American Character in the Jacksonian Era. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0 19 505374 5. Krumen, Mark W. The Second American Party System and the Transformation of Revolutionary Republicanism. Journal of the Early Republic. Society for Historians of the Early American Republic, 12, 4, 509 537. Doi 10.2307 JSTOR 3123876. Lane, Carl. The Elimination of the National Debt in 1835 and the Meaning of Jacksonian Democracy. Essays in Economic and Business History 25, 2007. Online McCormick, Richard L. 1986. The Party Period and Public Policy, American Politics from the Age of Jackson to the Progressive Era. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-503860-6. McCormick, Richard P. The Second American Party System, Party Formation in the Jacksonian Era. Chapel Hill, University of North Carolina Press. Influential State-by-State -state Study. McKnight, Brian D., and James S. Humphreys, eds. The Age of Andrew Jackson, Interpreting American History Kent State University Press, 2012, 156 pages, Historiography Mayo, Edward L. 1979. Republicanism, Antipartyism, and Jacksonian Party Politics, A View from the Nation's Capital. American Quarterly. The Johns Hopkins University Press. 31, 1, 3-20. Doi 10.2307/2712484. JSTOR 2712484. Marshall, Lynn. 1967. The Strange Stillbirth of the Whig Party. American Historical Review. American Historical Association. 72: 445-468. Doi 10.2307/1859236. JSTOR 1859236. Myers, Marvin. 1957. The Jacksonian Persuasion: Politics and Belief. Stanford, CA: Stanford University Press. Pesson, Edward. 1978. Jacksonian America: Society, Personality, and Politics. Pesson, Edward. 1977. The Many Faceted Jacksonian Era New Interpretations. Important Scholarly Articles. Remini, Robert V. The Life of Andrew Jackson. Abridgment of Remini's Three Volume Biography. Remini, Robert V. Martin Van Buren and the Making of the Democratic Party. Rowland, Thomas J. Franklin B. Pierce. The Twilight of Jacksonian Democracy. Nova Science Publishers, 2012. Sellers, Charles. 1991. The Market Revolution: Jacksonian America, 1815 to 1846. Influential Reinterpretation. Shade, William G. Politics and Parties in Jacksonian America. Pennsylvania Magazine of History and Biography, Volume 110, Number 4, October 1986, pp. 483 to 507. Online. Shade, William G. 1983. The Second Party System. In Kleppner, Paul, et al. Evolution of American Electoral Systems. Uses Quantitative Electoral Data. Schlesinger, Arthur M., Jr. 1945. The Age of Jackson. Boston, Little, Brown and Company. Winner of the Pulitzer Prize for History. Sellers, Charles. 1958. Andrew Jackson vs. the Historians. Mississippi Valley Historical Review. Organization of American Historians. 44 4, 615 to 634. DOI 10.2307/1886599. JSTOR 1886599. Sharp, James Roger. 1970. The Jacksonians versus the Banks: Politics in the States After the Panic of 1837. 
Uses Quantitative Electoral Data. Silby, Joel H. 1991. The American Political Nation, 1838–1893. Silby, Joel H. 1973. Political Ideology and Voting Behavior in the Age of Jackson. Simeone, James. Reassessing Jacksonian Political Culture, William Leggett's Egalitarianism, American Political Thought 4 No. 3 359 390 in JSTOR Serrett, Harold C. Andrew Jackson, His Contribution to the American Tradition. Taylor, George Rogers Jackson vs. Biddle, The Struggle Over the Second Bank of the United States. Excerpts from Primary and Secondary Sources. Van Dusen, Glyndon G. The Jacksonian Era, 1828–1848. Standard Scholarly Survey. Wallace, Michael Changing Concepts of Party in the United States, New York, 1815–1828. American Historical Review. American Historical Association. 74 453–491. Doi 10.2307/1853673. JSTOR 1853673. Ward, John William. 1962. Andrew Jackson: Symbol for an Age. Wellman, Judith. Grassroots Reform in the Burned Over District of Upstate New York: Religion, Abolitionism, and Democracy. Routledge, 2014. Willents, Sean. 1982. On Class and Politics in Jacksonian America. Reviews in American History. The Johns Hopkins University Press. 10 45-63. doi. 10.2307.2701818. JSTOR 2701818. Willents, Sean The Rise of American Democracy, Jefferson to Lincoln. Highly detailed scholarly synthesis. Wilson, Major L. 1974. Space, Time, and Freedom, The Quest for Nationality and the Irrepressible Conflict, 1815-1861. Intellectual History of Whigs and Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> Primary sources Blau, Joseph L., ed. Social Theories of Jacksonian Democracy, Representative Writings of the Period 1825-1850 Online Edition Eaton, Clement ed. The Leaven of Democracy, The Growth of the Democratic Spirit in the Time of Jackson 1963 Online Edition Topic external links American Political History Online Second Party System 1824-1860 Short Essays by Scholar Michael Holt Tales of the Early Republic Collection of Texts and Encyclopedia Entries on Jacksonian Era, by Hal Morris Register of Debates in Congress, 1824-37, Complete Text, Searchable Daniel Webster Debate, 1830 on Nullification and Tariff The Works of Daniel Webster Six volume, 1853 edition documents on Indian removal 1831-33 War with Mexico, Links Hammond, The History of Political Parties in the State of New York 1850, History to 1840 from MOA Michigan Triumph of Nationalism 1815-1850 Study Guides and Teaching Tools.